Electrical engineers think reducing the speed of a pump will save energy. Mechanical engineers think restricting the flow will make a pump work harder. Neither of these things is true. Mechanical engineers just don't understand VFDs, and electrical engineers just don't understand pumps. Not understanding these counterintuitive facts about pumps can cost you a lot of money and reduce the dependability of your water supply. The curved vein centrifugal pump most commonly used today was invented in 1851. Nothing uses less energy than a normal centrifugal pump running at full speed and operating at its best efficiency point. Many people have tried, but no one has been able to improve upon this centuries old design. When a pump is built, it is put into a test pit and run through its paces. The performance of the pump is plotted from zero to max flow rate. Connecting the dots produces a pump curve. Guesswork, fuzzy math, and personal opinions don't apply. The pump curve shows you exactly what the pump will do. Manufacturers can supply a certified test and you can even witness the test on video. I have done the math and written several articles on this subject since 1993. I received many angry and threatening letters, emails, and phone calls accusing me of misinformation. So in this video I used data directly from the pump manufacturer's curves. Pump curves can show the horsepower, the efficiency, and the net positive suction head required. It can also have multiple performance curves depicting different impeller diameters and or multiple pump speeds. Don't let any of this confuse you. Most pump companies electronic catalog will let you X out the parts you don't need to see. In most cases we only need to look at the performance and horsepower curve for a single speed pump with a set impeller diameter. Lift and feet of head is on the left side of the performance curve. The flow rate in gallons per minute is on the bottom of the performance curve. The horsepower curve shows how much energy is used at all different operating points. Notice how the horsepower goes down as the lift or pressure goes up. It is completely counterintuitive but restricting the flow of a pump reduces the horsepower energy used and makes the pump work easier, not harder. As you can see, the horsepower for this pump naturally drops by 50% from 24 horsepower at 300 gallons per minute to just 12 horsepower at 10 gallons per minute without varying the speed of the pump. Another example is a residential application which has a required demand of up to 15 gallons per minute at 50 psi and needs to lift from a well with a pumping depth of 100 feet. To a pump, one pound of pressure is the same as 2.31 feet of lift. So to get 50 psi at the faucets, the pump must produce 50 times 2.31 or 115 feet of lift. That 115 feet of lift for the pressure must be added to the actual pumping depth to water in the well. If the pumping water level in the well is 100 feet and there is 5 feet of friction losses in the pipe, the pump must be able to produce 15 gallon per minute from 100 foot depth plus 115 feet, which is the 50 pounds pressure needed, plus 5 foot of friction loss for a total dynamic head of 220 feet. We look for a pump with a performance curve that intersects at 220 feet of head and 15 gallons per minute. This regular submersible pump, which spins at a constant 3450 RPM, fits the requirements. With this electronic curve, selecting the operating point of 220 feet and 15 gallons a minute will put a corresponding point on the horsepower curve. You can see this pump will use 1.392 horsepower at 15 gallon per minute flow. Putting another operating point at 2 gallon per minute flow shows the horsepower required decreases from 1.392 at 15 gallons per minute to 0.627 horsepower when the flow, is, flow rate is restricted to 2 gallons per minute. That's right. The pump speed or RPM stays at the normal 3450 RPM while the energy consumption drops by 55% when simply restricting the flow with a valve. Now let's look at a variable speed pump curve for the same application. Also known as variable speed drives, variable frequency drives, or just VFDs, the area shaded in blue is the supposed working area for this pump at varying speeds. Many engineers preach about the affinity law. They make a big deal about how horsepower is reduced by the cube of the speed, which shows a 50% reduction in speed will cause almost a 90% reduction in energy use. With this electronic pump curve, there are lines marked all the way down to 30% pump speed. If you place a point at 30% speed and 2 gallons per minute, it will show the horsepower will drop all the way down to 0.049 of a horsepower. 
That's impressive, right? However, the most important part of the affinity law, which many engineers conveniently try to forget, is that head or pressure is lost by the square of the speed. At 31% speed, this pump can't even lift water out of the well, much less build the 50 pounds of pressure needed. The pumping level of the well will always be at 100 feet, and the system will always need 50 psi, so the pump must always deliver at least 220 feet of total head. The most this pump can be slowed down and still produce the 220 feet of head needed is only 20%, not 70% as many falsely believe. Anything lower than 80% of full speed will not lift water out of the well or produce pressure to the faucets. And since 80% of full speed is the slowest speed possible, reducing energy consumption by the cube of the speed doesn't add up to much. As you can see, placing a point at 220 feet ahead and 2 gallon per minute flow shows the pump can only be slowed by 20%. This requires 0.583 of a horsepower, which is 92% more energy than the 0.049 horsepower many would like for you to believe. The pump must always maintain 220 feet of head, so none of the shaded area below the red line is usable. Since 0.583 horsepower is the least energy use possible with a variable speed pump, there is only a 7% difference in the 0.627 horsepower needed by simply restricting a normal full speed pump with a cycle stop valve or CSV. Then when you look at the power needed for the maximum flow rate of 15 gallons per minute, the variable speed pump uses 1.515 horsepower compared to a normal full speed pump using only 1.392 horsepower. A VFD causes the pump motor to be less efficient in several ways. In spite of these facts, many people will see the amp meter dropping from 1.515 horsepower at high flow and high RPM to 0.583 at low flow and low RPM and still say, look, the VFD is saving 62% in energy. But wait a minute, not so fast. Decreasing the speed only reduces the horsepower needed to spin the pump and motor. Varying the speed actually increases the energy consumption per gallon produced. Looking again at the maximum flow, producing 15 gallons per minute with 1.515 horsepower is using 0.101 horsepower per gallon per minute produced. This pump slowed down by 20% is still using 0.583 horsepower for only 2 gallon per minute flow, which is 0.292 horsepower per gallon per minute produced. That is a 290% increase in energy use at low flow caused by varying the speed with a VFD. Then if you compare a normal full speed pump producing 15 gallons per minute at 1.392 horsepower to the variable speed pump at 1.515 horsepower, the variable speed pump is using 6% more power per gallon produced at high flow rates. Even with state-of-the-art technology, permanent magnet motors and all that, variable speed pumps always use more energy per gallon, not less. Running on across the line, true sinusoidal power direct from the grid or generator, a normal full speed pump is more efficient. Because the CSV does not use electricity and the standard pressure switch completely disconnects power from the pump, there is zero power used when the pump is off. So now that you know the power consumption for a normal full speed pump can be less than a variable speed pump, let's discuss how a cycle stop valve or CSV can deliver the same constant pressure performance as a VFD. Restricting the flow of a pump with a valve does not reduce the pump's pressure building ability like varying the speed does. The CSV reduces the pressure, so the house or system always sees a constant 50 psi regardless of how much or how little flow is required. The CSV makes the pump think as is in a deeper well, so it produces less flow when needed. The pressure before the CSV, which is called back pressure, increases when the flow is reduced. We now know that increasing the back pressure of the pump actually decreases the horsepower and makes the pump work easier. However, the amount of back pressure needs to be figured to make sure the pressure rating of the pipe and the valve is adequate. 
The pump curve is also used to figure back pressure. When figuring back pressure, we always use the worst case scenario, which is the high static water level, not the pumping level. Using the previous example of a well with a pumping depth of 100 feet, let's say the static water level measures 50 feet. Looking at the full speed curve at zero flow, this pump can build a total head of 300 feet. Since the static water level is 50 feet, we can deduct that from the 300 feet total the pump can build. 300 feet minus 50 feet equals 250 feet of head. 250 feet divided by 2.31 equals 108 PSI. So while the CSV is delivering a steady 50 PSI as flows vary from 15 to 2 gallons per minute to the house, the back pressure on the pipe before the CSV will vary from 50 to 108 PSI respectively. The back pressure must be lower than the pressure rating of the pipe and CSV, which is generally not a problem as most pipes are rated for more pressure than the pump can produce. Why are so many manufacturers, engineers, utilities, and government agencies still promoting VFDs as energy savers? Pump and VFD manufacturers are raking in the profits by letting everyone believe these misconceptions. Electrical engineers specify VFDs because they just don't understand how pumps work, while utilities and government agencies want to look like they are trying to help everyone save energy. Obviously, all of them drank the Kool-Aid, and none of them know how to read a pump curve. Ultimately, it is costing consumers and taxpayers way too much. Submersible, turbine, centrifugal, jets, and even pool pumps work the same way. A VFD is just trying to trick a pump into doing something it already does naturally. Learning how to read a pump curve can help save energy, reduce costs, and make your pump system last longer. There is no need for third-party verification, studies by the government, or an accredited university. When you know how to read them, everything can be verified by the pump curve. If you need help reading a pump curve or any further assistance, contact us or see our webpage at cyclestopvalves.com.